Today I woke up with an important question in my mind. How many icons can macOS Dog actually contain? This question bothered me so much that I just had to find out. Of course, from power user perspective. So, let's do it. Power user. I started simply with icons that I had available in my launchpad. Usually, I keep max of 10 icons in my dock. And it was quite a surprise for me watching how aesthetically the dock is changing getting more and more icons. With every additional icon, the dock is getting a little bit smaller and wider, simultaneously adjusting the size of the icons with this smooth animation. The dock is getting smaller and smaller. I'm curious how small it can actually be and what is the actual limit of icons in the dock. This is going to be a long way, so let me speed it up a little. And here I thought that this is the actual limit, but strangely, XAMPP OS X Manager was unable to add to the dock. I'm surprised, cause this is just a regular icon. If someone has an idea why, please let me know in the comments below. Fortunately, we can continue with our experiment. Ok, so I'm out of icons in Launchpad and the actual record is 94 icons. My idea is now to start adding a bunch of folders instead of icons. That's why I copy pasted a lot of them, but unfortunately I can't add them to the dock in a convenient way. You see, folders can be added only from the right side of the dock. The same rule applies to files, they are unable to add from the left side. That's why I started looking through the applications folders and I found some apps able to add to the dock. My next step was kinda stupid and I started downloading a bunch of iOS games from App Store just to spawn a lot of icons. My best shot was for chess games because usually they are small and there's a lot of them available in App Store. I realized too late that there is a much simpler way to fill up the macOS dock than downloading all parts of chess series. By the way, I'm a fan of Chess 7. 6 was a little bit lame for me. Hashtag shoutout team 7. The dock is really small right now and distinguishing icons is still possible if we focus enough to do it. And it's definitely impractical to work with such messed up bar. But hey, let's go further, shall we? The next step is opening more and more Safari tabs. And here is where finally the dog really started to sweat. It looks so funny how all the icons are squeezed more and more to the right with every opened tab. And the size changing of the dock is barely visible. I realized that the only limit in this experiment is my actual RAM memory size. And that's why I later changed Safari tabs to regular finder windows to save some space. Keeping the score in this situation is pointless. Unless someone wants to beat my score. I would definitely repeat this experiment if I got my hands on a more powerful machine in the future. Icons are totally unreadable right now and the dock is so extremely filled up that it looks almost like an empty one. But we can still see the names of elements after putting the cursor above them. And now let's push it to the limit. The dock somehow started to show icons again, but with every new window my MacBook is getting more and more laggy as hell. Look how long it takes for him to open one single window. As we can see, Safari takes 1 GB of memory usage and Finder over 5 GB. We are really close to an end. Hope my MacBook is not gonna crash. Really interesting is the fact that my MacBook is not hot at all. I was wondering if it gets hot, but it remains still cool. And browsing the web and watching movies is still fast. 
That's amazing, with such a big load. Okay, so my MacBook is starting to be really laggy right now. And that would be the last part of Finder Windows for him. Don't know why, but the overall size of Finder elements dropped down to 4 GB from 5, even with more opened windows. Maybe macOS features some kind of compression algorithm reserved for this kind of situations. We can clearly see that it has over 2000 opened windows more than in the previous check, and even the swap memory has now a lower value. I have to make some research. Such an interesting topic. Okay, so for the end, I thought it would be funny if I would restart my MacBook and check the option to open all windows back on start. But after we find out what happens, let's quickly do some gaming tests on it. Let's open Minecraft. Oh, it seems I can't do this on the guest account. Okay, let's go. It's time to restart. Unfortunately, my MacBook was so laggy that I could not even record restarting process. But I'm gonna put some speed up highlights from this whole experiment process right in the second. Yeah, so we are after restarting and as you can see, my MacBook restarts successfully. Really slowly, but successfully. And unfortunately, it not opened all of the windows back. Let me check this really quick. Yes. We lost 10,000 opened finder windows, nah, but I'm still proud of the results. That's fantastic that there is no actual limit for macOS Doc. Let me know if you want me to make this kind of video, but for Windows Doc of course. Let's see the fantastic speed up version of the whole process now. And today's sponsor is Power User. Power User is a fantastic YouTube channel about everyday modern technology. You can find the reviews, unboxing, shorts, and of course, a lot of interesting videos. The content is very informative and solid, and you should definitely check it out. Go and subscribe now.